Some of my favorite episodes are the holiday episodes, the Thanksgiving and the Christmas episodes. We got dangerous at the holidays. <laughs> um, As people do. Yeah. Do you have a favorite of those episodes? And also, how did the Butterball Hotline... <laughs> Uh, the Butterball Hotline, I'll ask the, the part two first. Um, uh, somebody told me about the Butterball Hotline, and I couldn't get over it. And uh, I would always look for moments for Bartlett, uh, uh, because here comes romance and idealism again. Um, we don't have a king. Uh, uh, what we have is a person, a man, hopefully someday soon a woman. <laughs> with an incredible temp job, uh, is what they have. Uh, and um, I always uh, loved when I could, sure, I, I loved Bartlett in the Oval Office, I loved Bartlett in the Situation Room, um, but I loved Bartlett as a father and a husband uh, uh, the most. Any time that you could show this is uh, an ordinary guy, and he, even he hasn't gotten used to the fact that he's the president, he thinks he can call the Butterball hotline. They're not going to recognize his voice. <laughs> and he's got a staff. And this, this idea, actually, it had come to me when I was writing The American President. It's a holdover from that. Stories, by and large, are about ordinary people in extraordinary situations. But if you're writing about the President of the United States, he, every day is an extraordinary situation. Right. Um, so with The American President, I thought, well, what if you could do it the other way? What if you can write a story about an extraordinary person in an ordinary situation? So I wrote a scene where Michael Douglas, he's been on a date with uh, Annette Bening, and he just wants to send her flowers. And he realized he do it's been years since he's had a wallet or credit cards. Um, uh, Michael J. Fox says, you out of your mind. Jeez, <laughs> you can't walk into that uh, uh, store. Same thing with... Bartlett, um, uh, he's, you know, he's got turkey questions. He can't believe there's a Butterball hotline. He's going to do it. Um, favorite holiday episodes, I, uh, I like them all. What would happen, um, really starting with the first season at Emmy time, uh, is the whole cast uh, would be nominated. Um, uh, they, and, uh, and they would kind of take turns winning, except for Allison, who won every year. Yeah. Um, and is still uh, a winner. Yeah. Uh, and she's got an Oscar uh, on her shelf, Tina. Um, and she's from Dayton, and I'm from Dayton. That's right. Uh, so is Rob Lowe, so is Martin Sheen. Correct. Um, yeah, Dayton for some reason. Um, we make them good there. And so, so here's a great memory uh, that I, I have two, I have a number of great holiday, uh, now that I think about it. Uh, I've got a lot of great memories from In Excelsis Dale. It is very hard to get Richard Schiff to smile. Um, <laughs> it is very hard to detect happiness uh, uh, in there. I mean, he's a happy warrior. He comes to work and he comes to, to, uh, to work. But, uh, you know, it's, he, he's not ever quite satisfied in Excelsis Deo. He, mm. knew, uh, uh, he knew he had it. And he won the Emmy uh, uh, that year. The next year, Brad Whitford uh, uh, won the Emmy for Noel. Uh, our Christmas episode. And my great memory is that the first thing Brad did, John Spencer, who passed away um, uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, Richard won the first year, Brad won the second year, and when they called Brad's name, the first thing Brad did was turn around to John and say, you're next. Um, uh, and went up on stage, and, and, and John was next for Bartlett for America uh, uh, for the third year. Um, uh, so, yeah, those uh, holiday episodes were great. We had the Whiff and Poofs uh, yes. uh, our, our fourth year, and I loved those guys. Yes, uh, yes, I mean, they were the honest to God with Whiff and Poofs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, I'll tell you, we, I know we have to go. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one last thing. I, I wanted to give credit to so many more people than I, I was able to uh, tonight. But um, in, I'm pretty sure it's the first season, um, Timothy Busfield as Danny Kincannon, a oh. uh, uh, reporter, right? Uh, another uh, uh, recurring guest character I couldn't get enough of. He gives CJ a goldfish, uh, uh, right? <laughs> he misunderstands when Josh tells him she likes goldfish. He meant the crackers, crackers. Um, and she gives him a golf <laughs> he gives her a goldfish 
<laughs> in every episode after that, for the entire run of the show, the props department would uh, have a different goldfish bowl in CJ's office with, you know where there'd be like a treasure chest or something or a diver at the bottom of a goldfish bowl? It would be a little prop that had something to do with the theme uh, of the show. Uh, even if it was dark, I mean, if the show was about nuclear weapons, there'd be like a fallout shelter at the, at the bottom of the thing. Three of those goldfish bowls are in the Smithsonian. Wow! Yeah. So um, that's our entire props department. Do not tell Allison that it wasn't the same goldfish for seven years. She is sure. I can't remember that guy's the goldfish's name now. It had a name. Oh, great. Wow, wow. Nice. Yeah. Seriously. I, 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 if you have social media accounts or anything, don't. Allison thinks that Gail Aww. made it for the entire time. <laughs> She's never looked up how long can a goldfish live. It's like two weeks. Um, uh, but there were many, many actors playing Gail.